Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to introduce you to a brand new feature coming in C Sharp 13 called Semi-Auto Properties or simply the Field Keyword in Properties. Now that is a brand new keyword that we didn't have before called the Field Keyword and can only be used within a Properties Getter or etc. Now if this sounds familiar, don't worry, that is probably because it has been attempted to be added for the past two versions of C Sharp and it's basically feature complete for a long time now but it hasn't been added because it is very challenging to add for a very specific reason, which I will talk about in this video. And finally, Microsoft have solved this problem and that's why I think we are definitely getting it in C Sharp 13. Okay, so first I want to show you the problem that this keyword is aiming to fix. I'm just going to show you how it's supposed to work. So I'm going to say public class test over here. And let's say that I have a property. I'm going to use an auto property. So all I will have here is, let's say I represent a number with a property. Now, that is all fine. And behind the scenes, what this nice syntax is trying to do is it's basically hiding a field with the name private int underscore number. And then that field is returned through a getter method and a setter method, which is why basically you cannot have a method that is void called set number, the compiler will just not allow it because that method already exists behind the scenes. And same goes for get number. It just returns a number and it is a void. So if I said get number over here, then this just won't compile because the name of that method is already reserved for the generated getter and setter of the number. So if I just quickly delete everything and I show you the lowered code, which means what high level C sharp compiles into before it goes into IL code and so on, uh, is like this. We have, if I move myself over here, we have the backing field that is compiler generated that will store that number value. And then we have the compiler generated getter and the setter. And if we were to go even lower, you can actually see this in the IL code over here. You can see we have the name, uh, where is it? Get number and it's a method returning an int32, an integer, and then set number that is a void. Exactly the thing I just showed you on the left. So we understand now how the feature works. The problem is that the moment you want to introduce any customization into the getter or the setter, well, it all falls apart because let's just say that I want to change this to be something like this. I want to have the getter and the setter broken down and I want to have some different behavior in the setter or the getter. Well, what if I want to get in here in the getter the value of the backing field of this property? Well, I can't. And same with set. I cannot access the backing field here. And if you had to do this previously, what you would have to do is you would have to say private int number and you would manually need to store now that field, make your code worse and go in the getter and return it. And let's say I want to duplicate it or multiply it by two on return. I can do that. And if I just want to set its value, I can say number equals value and so on or I could just store it as a duplicate. And if I quickly uh, have a test class over here, just to demonstrate how this is supposed to work, I can say test number equals 10, and then I can say console.write line, and then I can just say test number, and that is it. So now I get 20 here because I'm duplicating the value I am setting. I'm setting 10, I'm returning it as 20. So this approach now is fine, but it sort of defeats the purpose of having the elegant uh, auto property syntax. And this is for one property. If I had more properties, I would have to have one field I store per property to do any customization, which needless to say is a real pain. Wouldn't it be amazing to just delete this and have the option to say, hey, just access the field behind the scenes and set that. Well, until now this wasn't supported, but in C Sharp 13 it will. You will be able to directly access the field from the keyword field. So this will actually be the same color as value, get and set. It would be blue indicating it is a reserved keyword. And in fact, if I go to the right branch that already has this feature implemented called semi-auto properties, you will see that this now compiles and I am getting 20. Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that after incredible demand, we just launched our very first Blazor course on Dome Train called Getting Started with Blazor. And it's an incredible seven hour course introduction into Blazor by Jimmy Ekstrom. Now, Jimmy has been using Blazor 
from the very beginning using the production. He's written a book about it. He's an MVP about it. He has given international talks about it. So he's one of the best people in the world to teach Blazor. Blazor has undergone lots of change since it released and it's widely used by Microsoft and other companies including things like .NET Aspire, the dashboard is fully built in Blazor, so it's not going anywhere, but it has changed quite a bit since its launch. So if you have previous knowledge on it, it's probably outdated. This is the most up-to-date course to get started with Blazor. And in seven hours, you're going to learn lots of things. And the first 400 of you can use discount code GSBLAZOR20 to get 20% off at checkout. Now back to the video. So that's exactly how this feature is supposed to work. However, adding a field named field is really hard when the language is 20 years old and you're in the 13th version. And that's because field is a keyword that means many things in many domains and many contexts. If you have a football field, for example, you might name that field. Or if you have a field of study in education, you might name that field. It is a very common word, but it also makes a lot of sense in the context of this feature because it is a field, it is a backing field, that's what we call it. So Microsoft for the longest time couldn't really add this feature because in order to add it, they would have to code all the edge cases of previous code that already has the field keyword used in a property. Because remember, if this test was called field and I had a private int field over here, then what is this supposed to, to really mean, right? And I have to change this over here. But which field am I using here? Am I using the integer over here, this field, or am I using the field keyword? It's a very tricky one. And Microsoft historically has tried to avoid issues like this with things like the var keyword or await and async keywords. But I think they finally made the right decision with this feature because the decision they took is they're not really going to do anything. They will break code. When you move from C sharp 12 to C sharp 13, your code will break if you have used the name field in a property. And that's very important. Now, the great thing about this is that Microsoft will also launch tooling when C sharp 13 is out to allow you to automatically convert previous code to the escape version. And by the way, in C sharp 13, if you want to escape that keyword, all you have to do is add the add symbol and this will now mean that you escape the keyword and you're using the actual field over here and not the keyword. That does make sense, I hope. Which will make your code uglier, sure, but I do think Microsoft is choosing the right thing here because we won't be getting nice, cool features if they have to solve every edge case of breaking someone's code beforehand. So I think they're doing the right thing of saying, yeah, this will be a breaking change, slightly because it's a bit of a niche of a niche, but when you have a language that's popular, inevitably you're going to break some code and also providing tooling that will give you a warning that, hey, if you upgrade this project to C sharp 13, this will break. Let me apply refactoring for you automatically and escape everything that might break. And then from now on, you can use the keyword without worrying about breaking anything. I think it's a brilliant idea. I think it's a very nice quality of life feature and I'm glad that Microsoft is adding it. But now I want to know from you, what do you think about this feature? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching and as always, keep coding.